Greetings, everyone. This is Dr. R.L. Davis. We're coming to you from the Zion Word Ministries in Anderson, Missouri, United States of America. We're glad you've joined us for the next 27 minutes, and we trust that uh, we'll bring some biblical precepts to you that will help you in your spiritual growth and to know the Lord Jesus Christ in a more excellent way. Our subject today will be talking about biblical education, and we chose that subject today because of my special guest that I have with me today, Dr. M. Hilden Guy from Eagle River, Alaska. Greetings. Good to have you with us today. Thank you, Dr. Davis. It's always good to be here with you. Well, the Africans have heard much about you, and we're here to discuss uh, education, and also you tell us a little bit about your work up there and your vision and your burden and what God is how God's blessing you and, and all of that. Well, we, with the University of Christian Studies and Seminary, we have a program that can take somebody from the very beginning level of their educational process and take them all the way through a doctorate program. Now, that means that they can start with just a simple study if they just want to beef up their Bible knowledge. Mm -hmm. Also, they can continue on in a degree program. And we have majors in education in biblical studies and counseling. And there are several different uh, sub-majors to that or, or uh, secondary minors or majors that they can actually in, engage in the study. So we have over 400 courses that students can take on an extended campus basis. Right. So what we're doing today is giving you an opportunity to choose a, a format that would help you in your walk with God. Absolutely. And you've never turned one away that I know of, and you probably never will. No, we haven't because we believe that money always follows ministry. We feel like the Lord has given us this ministry, and we don't want to turn people away just because of lack of financial resources, which sure. sometimes tends, it tends to be the case everywhere in the world, sometimes more so overseas. But sure. we believe that if we minister properly, uh, educationally, and so forth, that the funds will be there. And the Lord's never failed on that. Right. He never will. He can't. The main thing is to start. Absolutely. And we find that there's a lot of interest in it, but you have to dedicate the time and you have to have that vision for your life and how the educational process can actually enhance your ministry. Right. It's meant to complement your ministry that you have right now, not be a detriment. A detriment. I, true biblical education is always an asset. Well, you have to understand that God's Word is a textbook for life. It has the answers that, it, the answers are there. Yeah. It, but many people lack the understanding of how to actually look for those formulas, that if you follow them, they are a key to success. Mm -hmm. And God's Word has always been proven this way. Uh, God's men and women, their lives per, portrayed in the Bible, have always right. proven this to be so. Absolutely. Well, we have a text tonight, Joshua 1, 8. We'd get you to read for us, please. And we'll, we'll start in this uh, program tonight. This is Joshua 1, 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I like that part, good success. Absolutely. That's in every area of a person's life. And it's constitutionally based because good in the Hebrew and the Greek means constitutional. Mm -hmm. And our constitution is God's word. It's what we refer to for every type of precedent, whether it's a function inside the church or outside the church. So we have a constitution by which we operate in God's Word. So if we'll follow the blueprint, then we'll be successful. Absolutely. And Francis yeah. Schaeffer uh, once said that mm -hmm. as long as you follow a logical process in God's Word, you'll find Christ at the end every time. Amen. So what we want to do is uh, to put Dr. Guy's email address on the screen and you copy it down and email him and, and uh, God will make a way for you where there is no way. We believe that to be true. Absolutely. Biblical education is believed to be essential and vital. It's vitally important in the day we live in. The scripture says that God's people perish for a lack of knowledge. Then we believe wisdom is knowledge rightly applied. People will have good success if they are taught the truths of God's word and by faith applies its truths to their daily lives. God has given His Word and vested power therein, that we may be blessed both now and for all eternity. And I like the scripture in uh, 3 John 2, which says, 
Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So what our burden is, and we're linked up with you, Dr. Guy, is, is to bring people to a place where their soul will prosper, and then we know they'll prosper financially, physically, spiritually, and every other way. That's very true, and what it really amounts to is the first things first. Have that biblical base, and then in every realm of life and in society, you'll find that good or that constitutional success, success that's defined in God's Word. Mm -hmm. And the way that that takes place is through a systematic study of God's Word. Amen. And the university, uh, your own educational and ministry work are functions that can make this much more feasible for the individual and also for churches in general, pastors mm -hmm. and uh, congregations. Well, you, you've, we've known each other for many years and you know that uh, it's our mission to get people to think. Mm -hmm. If we can cause people to think, then they can grow. And that is so true and really that's, that's an understatement and I appreciate you bringing that up because it's not so difficult to get people to be passionate mm -hmm. or to emotional and as wonderful as that is because yeah. emotion and passion, that's a wonderful thing, but it's much more challenging to get people to think. And if you can get people to think, then they will know why they are passionate and then they really have something to be passionate about. Yeah, they find a purpose. Absolutely, and direction. It's all in the scripture. It's right there, it's right and there. it really is, it's a, if you will, if you excuse the expression, it's a textbook for life. Sure. It's something by which we can check and recheck all of our responses, all of our inclinations. Mm -hmm. We can use it as a precedent to make sure that we truly are on track and where God wants us to be. Amen, absolutely. Well, we believe that this process should start at a young age. Not wait until you're one foot in the grave type thing. Right. But it should start very young age, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 18. If you have that, or could turn to that, please. All right. So we don't want to wait until we're old and then begin to start, to start our studies of the Scripture. We need to start now. The younger, the better. Absolutely. All right. Let's read we that. have had students that are even of an older age, and mm. you're never too, too old to No, learn. it's never too late. And so uh, you stay with the Word, you make sure that you're always, I mean, absolutely, that's, that's the way you keep your mind fresh, mm -hmm. is staying in the Word. And so we read okay. in 2 Timothy 3, in verse 15 through 18, And then from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And that's a very powerful passage for us mm -hmm. to, to get a hold of so that we can know that we can be thoroughly and fully yeah. furnished. That from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's quite a statement. There is no other book with that information except the Scripture. Well, and it's, it's that great uh, combination of being the most profound book ever written and yet being simple enough for those just starting out with the Lord to understand and to grasp. Well, it's, it's God's book, it's inspired, and it has a way of feeding every person's mind no matter what level they're at. It's amazing. It is amazing, and one of the things that we've experienced in many circles is that very often people feel that somehow, and I don't know how they come to this conclusion, that somehow the educational process squelches the leading of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and nothing could right, be further yeah. from the truth. And that's true. The Holy Spirit is the great instructor, and He leads us back to God's Word, and He is the author that comes alongside us as we're studying God's mm -hmm. Word, and helps us to fully understand it, and to, that's right. to realize that the Bible is a thinking person's book. That's right, really? and logical. Absolutely, it's yeah. logical. It's, it provides any number of formulas mm -hmm. that if we follow them, we can understand what it means to be successful and to gain direction and make progress. That's right. And that's God's will for a person's life. That's God's will for your life. Parents have a part to play in this educational process. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6, we find an important scripture. If you'd like to turn over there for us. Okay. And uh, so it starts at a young age. Parents are involved in the educational process. And then thirdly, we'll find the church is also involved the educational process. Well, one of the things that we found, Dr. Davis, through our own educational process is that there, especially where children are concerned, there are three factors that really bring together the, 
real impact that a person can have for the Lord. Now, if a mm -hmm. child has a good Bible-believing, teaching, preaching, living church, right. if their family is following the biblical model for the family, and they have a solid educational background, so one, two, three, you've got those three working together and that child's going to win. Yeah. They'll Can't be successful. Lose. Absolutely. Proverbs 22 and verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Now, we're not, we're not saying the, teach, the, the scriptures are teaching that a child has to ever depart, but if they do, we believe they'll come back. Their foundation, that you can't get away from the foundation of the scripture. Well, the truth is really foundational, as you it's say. Foundational. And it's, it's the centerpiece, and this is something that we've got to be careful that we do in our churches, is to keep God's word right at the center. That's it right. cannot be relegated or made secondary to any other factor, even a praise and worship uh, right. service, even as important as that is. The praise and worship is meant to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the, the word. pinpointed aspect yeah. of God's Word. Right, yeah. We've got to make sure that nothing ever supplants that. And, uh, and the Africans know that very well, that the Word takes the preeminence over all else. Of course, Christ Jesus being the center of focal point. Absolutely. Nothing takes the place of that. Well, and we have found as we've traveled across the United States and in other countries, I must admit that I've been startled by mm -hmm. the lack of understanding of God's Word. Right. Most Christians might be challenged to give you an adequate description of what faith really is, or what grace really is, or where mm -hmm. you can find that as a precedent mm -hmm. in God's Word. And so this is something that, that you and I have in, endeavored to do and are determined to do, is to help right. people have a greater understanding of God's Word, something that's functional in their lives, that's something right. that they can use day to day. Yes, and it will carry eternal dividends and Absolutely. benefits. It's just out of this world. One day, of, one day at a time yeah. forever. The parents then, the Christian parents are responsible to God to train up their children the way they should go, teach them the scripture. But that brings us to the church, the pastor's responsible to teach the parents Absolutely. because many of them get saved later years of life and it's, it's a ever-changing situation. But Jesus told Peter, he said, quote, feed my lambs. And that implies feed them the word of God, feed them knowledge, wisdom, uh, the scripture, and don't deviate from that. Um, Isaiah talks about, Isaiah 26, 34 talks about, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So if we study the scripture and meditate therein, our mind will be stayed on the Lord and we'll be blessed. Absolutely. The mind is part of our soul, linked to our emotions and will. But if we can fill, fill our mind, uh, which is the seat of our emotions, I could say, then uh, we'll know how to make the proper decisions because the Word's in us. Well, and keeping our mind stayed on the Lord and being fed. Fed. There's a lot of spiritual junk food out there right now. Things that are doing absolutely <laughs> Too nothing. Too much sugar. <laughs> absolutely nothing to cause people to draw closer to the Lord, to put their lives in proper perspective and to help them from, from mm -hmm. day to day. And even scientific studies will prove that one meal of junk food takes years off your life. One meal. One meal. Now when you talk about spiritual junk food, that's something that has even greater eternal impact. We've got that in America, spiritual junk food. Quick well, fix. Well, and you and I, again, with the university and Zion Word Ministries, we've determined that the best approach is a straightforward approach to God's Word, verse by verse, a very textual approach. Mm -hmm. uh, the interpretation is narrow, but, the, ap but the application mm -hmm. must be wide. Yeah. That means our understanding of God's Word and the aspect of interpretation is very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And that's sure. the best thing to do, not try to read between the lines, but then once you have that interpretation, and hopefully you get that through the, the primary educational tool of the church, mm -hmm. then you must go out and apply the things that you've learned because that is the last step to proper understanding of God's Word, is applying it, and that's often where it breaks down. Yes, sir, and we're talking about simply discipleship training. Mm -hmm. You know, here in America, the schools of yesteryear were, the, the primary textbook was the Scripture. Mm -hmm. The church was the school. But now, here in America, there's a separation of church and state. We've got problems. And until we get back to this, 
thus saith the Lord, the scriptures is the final authority, we're going to continue to have problems. Very much so. And much in puzzle circles where the answers are not definitive, they're abstract. Mm -hmm. That's something that has infiltrated its way into the church. We can know through a proper educational process in God's Word, what is the next prophetic sequence, oh, the next event to take place. Absolutely. We can also know what is expected of every believer because Christ mm -hmm. met that five-fold criteria. We can also know what is happening inside the church today as sure. opposition, opposition totally. that's in the church. Right. We can spot it as three armies, if you will, that are moving against the church. That's happening today. Yeah. And these are defined. It's clear and it's definitive. There's nothing abstract about it. No, it's right up front. Mm -hmm. Well, we had the concept, unfortunately, in the Church of America that somehow or another, if you study and receive a degree of some sort, especially a biblical degree, then somehow or another you've lost the call of God, the anointing flies away, and that's not so. No, not at all. No, it's the opposite. It, it really is it the opposite. It enhances the anointing. It's a deception of the enemy. The Holy Spirit has to give you something to say and you've got to study to get it. It's just not an automatic thing. Well, the last thing that the enemy wants is for God's people to be knowledgeable in the Word. Because what makes the enemy back up is our proper interpretation and application of the Word. There can be the spoken Word, mm -hmm. but there has to be the substance of the Logos backing it up, the aletheia, yeah. the unveiled reality of the Word. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, the enemy will start to back up. And if you've got anything yeah. less than that, he'll just laugh in your face. Well, then, too, when you combat demons, you have to speak the Word, which becomes a rhema. So, mm -hmm. you know, all these things are linked to the Scriptures. The Holy Spirit anoints the Scripture. It is anointed. It is. And as you and I have discussed even recently, that the anointing is not just an episode. There can be an intensification of the anointing, but the anointing is something that you live. You That's walk right. in it. You don't phase in and out, lost, saved, and, and all. Absolutely. No. And, and we have to also understand that when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, He's going to be speaking Scripture to us. Every time. And that's, that's how, how we know. <laughs> that's how you can know that it is the Holy Spirit. It's because He'll be speaking God's Word. Well, I've heard many preachers here in America say that uh, the prophets of old were not educated, which is uh, not true. No, it's not. We have Moses. By God's providence, Moses, the child of a Hebrew slave, was found and adopted by an Egyptian princess. And we know the story. He, he went on to be uh, well educated mm -hmm. uh, in the country that he lived in. Mm -hmm. Very Absolutely. well educated. Very well. Mm -hmm. uh, he was learned in wisdom of the Egyptians, the Bible says in Acts chapter 7, 22. And um, so he didn't lose his call because of education. No. Secondly, Daniel was an educated man. Even though he was a prophet, he wrote to the book of Daniel. But uh, he was educated in, in, I know he was educated because he was left in charge of certain government functions uh, in Persia. And they wouldn't allow an ignorant person to be a government official uh, helping to run the country and advise uh, the, the leader if mm -hmm. he was ignorant and unlearned. That's right. Daniel was very educated. Paul the Apostle was another one that. Paul was someone that was educated at the foot of the highest level of the Sanhedrin. That's right. His teachers were the best that there were in the land. And Paul was somebody that, Saul slash Paul, yeah, Saul was Paul. somebody that was yeah. headed for the, the pinnacle of the Jewish government and educational system. And he would sat at the feet of the greatest teachers. And Moses and Paul are excellent examples of how God can use the highly educated, God can use anybody that's willing and desirable, sure. but He will not sure. launch a person out until they are prepared. He that's won't right. launch a novice into a position of authority or even into a position of peril. He prepares us. That's and right. part of that preparation is being prepared in God's Word. Is and, studying. And having that understanding. Yeah. So would, would it be safe in, in presuming then that, that college uh, education whether it be correspondence, uh, camp on campus, uh, however the, the mode, it is meant to enhance the individual and to help them to grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus. Absolutely, and you bring up an interesting topic, and sometimes I'm not sure that people understand the aspect of grace. 
Right. Grace is a curriculum hmm. for life. And this, it, it could be described in other ways as well, but primarily grace is a curriculum. It's something that God allows us to go through the process of trial and error sure. in His grace. Oh, sure. Because after all, in any curriculum you'll find in our college courses, you'll have to take a test. Absolutely. And you must pass that test you gotta pass it. in order to go to the next level. Which and, builds and grace supplies us Christ's that. esteem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're not much on self-esteem, but Christ's esteem is the subject. Well, people often talk about having self-esteem, and I think what, what is needed in many circles of the church today is more self-control rather than sure, self-esteem. Sure, right, yeah. So. Fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, we receive that by knowledge of the Word as we grow in grace, and the Holy Spirit being our helper, of course. Uh, let's look at uh, chapter 22, verse 3, talking about Paul the Apostle. And while you're turning there, so Paul the Apostle then was taught by Dr. Gamaliel. Yes. He was an educated man. So God used that man. He did. To teach Saul, who became the great apostle of all time. And Gamaliel yeah. really came up with some of the most profound statements in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. He stated in, in paraphrased form that if the movement involving Christ was true, then we should leave it alone. Yeah, and we should alone. leave it alone, and if it isn't true, it will yeah, fail. That's right. That's but there's a testimony of you and I sitting here and those watching oh, right absolutely. now that it has not failed. And it can't that it fail. is a system that will work. And it's the only system that will work. It is. It says in Acts 22, 3, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day." Yes, the point is in that scripture he was taught by Gamaliel, who uh, was one of the most brilliant minds of that day. Absolutely. About the law mm -hmm. also. I mean, that was the Old Scripture, the Old Testament Scripture, of course. Joseph was a, was a man in the Old Testament that uh, I don't know much about Joseph's uh, education, but I, I do know that he did receive education in, in, uh, in Egypt. But one thing that stuck out to me about Joseph was he was given charge over the, the corn. And, and, you know, you've got to be able to, to, to know mathematics to the point mm -hmm. of being able to figure how, many, how, much, how many bushels of corn it would take to last seven years, so many million people. So he wasn't a dummy. He was smart. Right. He was very intelligent. Yeah. And this is the type of... People that I believe that the Lord is looking for. People to instruction. You mm -hmm. have to have that. If, if you feel that you are mm -hmm. beyond instruction, mm -hmm. I've got to tell you, you're really beyond help. Oh, that's we true. must be instructed. And no matter how far you go in the educational process, you will always be a student. And learning is living and living is learning. Sure, we're students. Absolutely. Uh, no one's stops. reached, no. But you can achieve a certain uh, positions as you, as you study and apply yourself. That's, it takes work. It takes work. The educational arena it takes well, work. Well, and just as in yourself and myself, uh, we, won't, we, don't, we do not give degrees to anyone. You earn them. Yeah. And that makes them all the more valuable. And you can realize that you're doing this to glorify God, mm -hmm. to help God's people to expand the kingdom. Time is running out. Mm -hmm. And one of the big problems that people have is they hesitate and they wait too long. Put it off. Put it off. Procrastinate. Formal education then would be considered probably a vehicle with which God could bring about His plans and purposes to aid the, the person uh, mentally and spiritually and in all ways. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'd just like to reiterate that we know that we can help people have a better understanding of God's Word. We won't turn you away if you have an earnest desire to know God's Word. We'll help you. We'll help you know what's going to happen next in prophecy. We'll help Absolutely. you know what's expected of you today. And we'll help you have a perspective about all of your yesterdays according to God's Word. That's right. You must come to a place where that you're serious enough about education that you want to know for yourself. Because how do you know what this person is saying is correct? You've got to know the Scripture for yourself. But we're giving you an opportunity today to, to start. Well, Dr. Davis, I want to congratulate you for this ministry you're reaching out to hundreds and thousands of people on a weekly basis and you're presenting opportunities for them. And that's all that you can really do is just open up the door, present the opportunity, and see who steps through by the leading of the Spirit. That's right. I've heard people say, well, the Holy Spirit teaches me. 
Well, I want to ask you a question. How does he do that? God must have a, a man or a woman to work through. Absolutely. He didn't come down and just, uh, you know, send angels. and uh, He does, but he still uses man to bring the plan of salvation and all the Scripture. Absolutely. A redeemed person. And the fivefold ministry of the church is an act of love by God. And Amen. the church will always be the educational centerpiece of the educational process. And the only one that really matters. Absolutely. For time and eternity. Well, finally, Jesus was well educated. He taught the doctors of the law at age 12. And the, the, the silent years that we call from age 12 to age 30, 